I just have ordinary conversation. I saw what was it like two years ago, I was in the airport in New York, and I saw this white lady talking, I don't know if it was her daughter or not, she's about five years old. And she keeps looking at me. So look, you know, five-year-old children are cool and clean. She walk over me and said, excuse me, uh, your name Dick Gregory? She said, yep. Say, my mother said you had a tail. A what? I said, yeah, but tell her mine's in the front. <laughs> Go so anyway. <laughs> My brother called me the other day. And he's always been the one that thought he had the most education, but he didn't know I was paying for it. Not the school, I was slipping the teacher's money to pass him so he would know. Oh. <laughs> so he wanted to be white. He started working for Enron before Enron got busted making about $3 million a day. Forgot who he was. He packed up everything and moved to LA, where the stars live. Hired him a Japanese garden. A nigga didn't even have a garden. <laughs> Got him a nanny. And when them Mexican nannies, you remember, about eight years ago, they went on strike, took a day off. He was upset because he couldn't go to work. He had to stay home with the children, him and his wife. And thank God, that's the first time he realized his children didn't speak English. Oh. <laughs> Nothing. Yes, ma'am. I'd just like to say, uh, Mr. Gregory, it is a pleasure to be in your company at this time. Thank you very much for Thank coming. You much. My name is Janine Coxum, and I just have a question. Um, what is your opinion? on the timing of everything that has happened to Bill Cosby? Well, let me, let me just say this. I have the number one research team in the world, OK? I know some things. If I told you, you probably want to leave from the suicide. That's how bad this stuff is. Let's go back to when Bill Cosby's son was killed. He was getting ready to buy NBC. Hmm? What most folks didn't know is that car he had, that Mercedes, was upscale. If you had a flat, it changed its own time. So he didn't have to call nobody to say, come change the time. He's on the highway. Ain't nobody had a robbery on the highway since well Fargo days. Hmm? <laughs> When the police turned in the report, they said he had $6,000 cash. Hmm? Said he had 12 credit cards. Hmm? And it wasn't robbery. Nope. When they made an arrest of this Russian immigrant, Six months later, said it was robbery. I called one of my top researchers back from Russia. I said, look into this for me. You know what we found out? That Russian was in Mexico City that night. Yeah. He had filed for a new trial. After that, he withdrew his file for a new trial and accepted it. That's what money can do. Now he's in the middle of negotiating another big deal. But let's say he did it. I've got six daughters. The last thing I'm going to do is protect somebody. 30 years later, you can't get no money from it. Who organized all of them? Hmm? They didn't know each other. Hmm? All of them say he gave him some drugs, huh? Is that what they say? 
So I called Bill. I said, Bill, I don't want to get in your problem, but me and my old lady, she's 75, I'm 83. What kind of drug was that? <laughs> they do it, they do it to white folks. Hmm? They do it more to black folks because of white supremacy. White supremacy and prejudice and say it's two different things. In the South, they don't care how close you get as long as you don't get too big. How could they? If I'm your slave, I live with you. Up north, they don't care how big you get as long as you don't get too close. And so this is what this is about. Tiger Woods, same thing. And all, Tiger fell into it. He said, he wasn't no Negro, he's a what, compilation? <laughs> so I said, Tiger, we down in the bar and say, Tiger, if you and six powerful white men had a meeting with the president and you came out the White House, Pennsylvania Avenue, and turned right, and three racist cops turned the corner and said, hit the ground, nigga. I said, who you think will fall? <laughs> As a matter of fact, they say, Tiger, what you doing on the ground? They didn't even hear it. Hmm? And did you ever see the movie King Kong? Yeah. Hmm? That was about the greatest heavyweight champ in the world, Jack Johnson, and his white women. OK? Empire State Building uh, with a white woman. Now, why would a gorilla go to New York? Ain't no trees and Lord no ain't no bananas. <laughs> Madison Square Garden is the boxing heavyweight champion of the world. That's Madison Square Garden. That's what those codes are. What's the, what's the movie with the, the Tin Man? What's that? The Wizard, go see that again. That's about the Kansas City Federal Reserve. Huh? So y'all go and, and think it's pleasure. Trust me. And so here come Tiger Woods. Got a, oh, they beat him up bad. A friend of mine got the pictures, which is a federal crime. When they came to the hospital, that was a mob whooping. Okay? How many, you golfers, see how many more he had to win to tie Jack Nickers? Anybody know? Y'all work this hard? Y'all don't play no golf? <laughs> Four. Five to be the all-time greatest. Put you in jail, boy. That white woman you care to Sweden to see your game? Put you under the jail. Or get sick. You start losing. That's what that's about. That's what that's about. It happens every day. Let me see here if I brought it with me. Every day. While I was looking for it, I found something else. This is the government document went out through military intelligence three weeks before King was killed to go into Memphis. And they had 19 different places set up to take him down if they missed there. And so like I said, it happens every day. Bill Cosby's lucky he's still alive because if he woke up tomorrow dead, all they do is tell us he committed suicide. Hmm? So, yeah. And who wouldn't believe it? Here. Chicago Tribune, Friday, March the 10th, 1987. Front page story in Chicago Tribune, FBI memo, use mob to kill Dick Gregory. Hmm? Me? What they didn't know, I got the memo before. <laughs> Before Johnson, head of the FBI, got it in Chicago. I'm the one released it. Wow. 
And I tell you like I tell them, come get me. If the God I pray to can't protect me from your filth, I'll help you pull the trigger. That's what this is about. And the only reason the CIA, FBI, and all them thugs got power because you surrendered yours. Huh? There's two things come from the universe, light and darkness. The sun represents light, the moon represents darkness. And you had never heard the sun arguing with the moon that uh, I'm not going to let you go tonight. And finally, the easiest thing you could do is just imagine you walked into a warehouse 30 miles long, pitch black, 30 million rats and mice, and 100 million roaches. All you got to do is turn the light on, and they will run. It's like that on this planet. Light have never had to bow down to darkness, and when you do, you violate the universal order. And then you get sick, you get all kinds of things, because that God said, I didn't put you here to behave to somebody, because they're trying to force you to do something.